What's up big dogs, homies and homets. Welcome back to the channel. It's officially Labor Day weekend, which means we are going out and getting ready for our fantasy football drafts. I thought I was going to say something else, didn't you, I bet. If your league's not fraudulent, you will be drafting within the next four or five days. Probably the most asked question on my channel, when is my draft? When is the video going to be up? We are drafting Labor Day Monday, that night, so the video will be up Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever I get around to editing it. And I wish I got more videos up for you guys, but I have a life, man. I got shit. Wow. I switched up I'm on the iPhone camera. I have a life, and I have shit to do. Like you guys. I work hard on this channel. What? Sorry. Anyways, I wanted to bring to you guys today a final 2016 fantasy football draft strategy a guide that kind of encompasses everything I've been saying from the beginning of the summer to draft night. Because I got a lot of questions are very specific or very random, you know, and I feel like this video will help you. So I'm going to kind of go position by position and tell you what I'm going to be looking for, what kind of strategies I'm going after. Without further ado, play the most gorgeous intro music on all of YouTube. Okay. And we back, and we back, and we back. So, let's start with the quarterback. Yep. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Jim Lee. I'll be right back. And I'm back. So, the quarterback position. Now, I am all aboard the late quarterback train. I am not reaching for guys early. I fucking hate when guys take quarterbacks within like the first six rounds. I mean, you're literally wasting a pick. And I don't, I don't think enough people understand like the logic behind the late quarterback, especially in team in ten team leagues and twelve team leagues where there's only one quarterback running. If you're in a two quarterback league, this makes this does not apply to you. You should get a quarterback early. At least your first. I'm gonna put this picture up. Okay, so here. You see on the left side the quarterback. You see all the way on the right side, the last column here is the fantasy points per game of each of these quarterbacks. Now look look at the difference between say quarterback five and quarterback fifteen. Or whoever it is, you know. Look at the difference between Quarterbacks like 10 spots apart, and on average, they're scoring like 1.5, maybe 2 points per game more. But the thing is, you're drafting quarterback 5 in like the 4th, 5th, or 6th round when you could wait and get quarterback 18, who's going to score 2 points less a game for you 10 rounds later. Like, does that make sense? Because you know all the guys, like that group of 15 to 20 quarterbacks are all going to be there at the end of the year. You know who's safe to pick. You know where they're going to end up in a range. Every one of these quarterbacks is going to be within two to two and a half points per game difference. Now, I know you could say that for the running back position also. You could say, hey, look at running back five and look at running back 15. They're only two points a game difference. But the thing about that is predicting these guys, like who's going to end up as quarter, uh, running back five and running back 15, is so difficult to do because there's so many random names and that changes on a year to year basis like that. You know, An incredible amount. Just look at that stuff. I mean, it's it, it, like that's the logic behind why people go with quarterback because the value, like where you get guys compared to waiting for one 10 rounds later and what they're going to produce for you is like almost identical. So it doesn't make sense to waste an early pick there when you can get a good running back or wide receiver at that spot. I hope that makes sense. So quickly, I wanted to get into some of the, the, the quarterbacks I love late in the draft this year. 
My first one would easily be Kirk Cousins of the Redskins. Now Kirk is quarterback 14 off the board, somewhere in like the 115 range of ADP. Now when you look at, at Kirk's outlook for this year, look at look at the team he has around him. We have Deshaun Jackson back healthy, which is completely underrated this year. You have uh, rookie Josh Doxson, first round pick, who should eventually make an impact, and I think he's very underrated right now. Um, could eventually take over Pierre Garçon. So Pierre Garçon, wide receiver three. Um, they have Jordan Reed, obviously, at tight end. They have a really underrated pass catching running back from Chris Thompson. Um, they have Wilson considered slot. I can't even remember the slot guy, but honestly, he's he's also over. Jameson Crowder, another underrated guy. They have weapons fucking galore in Washington, and Kirk Cousins put up a really, really nice year last year, uh, and it's flying under the radar, uh, and I'm not sure why, because he finished so strong, so you think people are kind of riding the wave for this year. When you look at the last four games, he's averaging 290 passing yards and three passing touchdowns a game. Over the last four games, that's huge numbers, that's huge numbers, that's like three three snaps. He threw four touchdown passes in three different games, so that ceiling is absolutely there for him. He was the most Accurate quarterback in the entire NFL last year, 69.8 pass completion percentage. The most accurate quarterback in the entire NFL. From weeks 10 to 17, listen to this, from weeks 10 to 17. Sorry, my dog's causing a ruckus right now. From weeks 10 to 17, her cousins was QB3 in fantasy, behind Cam Newton and Russell Wilson. I don't know what else I need to say. Come on, people, it's all his. You like that? Oh, Jesus Christ, Skips. He just ran into my uh, tripod. You know, say sorry. I dare you. Okay, we're back on my HD camera. Um, I think the last thing that happened was Skippy probably knocked over the camera as I was talking about Kirk Cousins. I think I got the last points I wanted to about Mr. Kirk. Mr. Kirkland. Uh, number two, Mr. Ty God. Ty the God Tella. Now, Tyrod. Sorry, I need to eat real quick. I was in the sea all day. I had an interview for a job. I didn't eat anything. I went in with this bandana. They're like, wow, you're a fucking savage. You hide. You hide. It was, it was just like that. So I'm wearing it. So I'm pumped up about it. It didn't happen. I wish it did though. So Tyrod's right now quarterback 15 off the board, around 120 overall. Now the way I see the Bills' outlook playing out is really they've had so many uh, injuries to their defense that I feel like it's going to be terrible. Last year it was overhyped because fucking Rex Ryan, he's honestly the most overrated coach in football. Their defense was bad last year. They've had even more injuries this off season, and they're going to be worse. They're going to be trailing, and they're going to need to throw a lot. Which means Tyrod will be throwing and running a lot. Tyrod averaged over 40 rushing yards a game last year. He was second in the NFL. He was like 65 yards behind Cam Newton, and he missed two games. So he would have been the NFL's leading rusher for the quarterback position. Uh, so that's a floor right there. You're getting 40 yards a game from him on the ground. So that's four points, boom, right off the bat. If he can improve as a passer, the, the sky's the limit for him. And he's not a bad passer. He finished the season with a 20 to six touchdown to interception ratio. Like that is very, very accurate. Like it, according to Pro Football Focus, PFF, who does like the very in-depth stats, he was the fifth highest rated quarterback in throws of 20 yards or more, which is perfect having guys like Sammy Watkins on, on the field with him because they're gonna connect for long touchdowns all day. And you gotta look at the end of the season last year when Watkins was like, I need the ball more. And Sammy started letting loose from weeks 12 to 17. Uh, Tyrod Taylor was quarterback six in fantasy, and I kind of expect that to pick up. He's getting drafted, he's getting drafted at quarterback 15. He will finish the season in the top 10. Sorry, my fucking camera died for like the fourth time on this one. This is taking me like four hours to shoot eight minutes of this video. The batteries are unreal in the worst way possible. So anyways, I think I was getting to number three quarterbacks that I love. Matt Stafford, if you watched my previous video, which was the bold predictions of how I think the three Detroit wide receivers will outscore the three Arizona receivers, I'm all in on this, this Lions offense. Stafford, 
We knew how magical he was after Mr. Cooter took over. Cooter, tutors, computers, it's all gravy. Stafford uh, wrapped up the year on a 19 to two touchdown to interception ratio under Cooter. Right now, his ADP is QB 18, like 130 overall. So you're paying nothing for this dude. After their bye week, when Cooter took over, he was QB four on a fantasy points per game basis. Quarterback four. He doesn't get much better than that. Literally only three guys can get better than that. That's it. Now, what I love about this offense is not only they added Marvin Jones and Anquan Bolden, who's going to be very underrated this year, is that they're completely switching to a no huddle. Hurry up. Last year they ran 7% of their plays, hurry up, no huddle. This year, this offseason, they've already been running 62% of their offensive snaps in the no huddle, which is an auto inflation of fantasy points for any kind of offense. Look at the shitty offenses of Chip Kelly on the Eagles. They were unstoppable. They were putting up fantasy points left and right regardless of the position or the talent of the player. So I just think uh, better weapons around him, RIP Kelvin Johnson, but there's, there's a lot more to go around. Uh, this hurry up offense and just the way he finished the year off with, with Cooter. Those are my three guys at QB. Wait on the QB. You can get an excellent value at the end of your draft. Don't draft. I mean, I can understand why people are reaching for Cam. As you saw in the points per game clip I put up, he was like three or four points ahead of the next best guy. But if you're banking on Cam, if you're going to pick him in the third or fourth round, that means you're expecting him to have another absolutely historic year like he did last year. And I don't think anyone's actually going to count on that happening again. So, fuck a QB. Let's move to running back. I'll kind of do running back and wide receiver together because they're one and the same. You know, those are those are the key skill players that you got. Now, you all know I'm all aboard the zero RB train car. And there's a bunch of reasons why you could go watch my zero RB strategy video that I made a couple weeks ago. But here quickly, here, here's what it is. It's that uh, the top wide receivers are so much safer than the top running backs. Look at last year's, you know, top five guys. If you were a top five pick last year, with maybe the exception of Antonio Brown, if you were a risk taker, it was almost in every league. Le'Veon Bell, Eddie Lacy, Adrian Peterson, Marshawn Lynch, Jamal Charles. Those are the top five guys going in almost every draft, you know, did not in a specific order. Four of those guys busted out completely. I don't care if they went injured. That's part of the game. Only Adrian Peterson finished as a top, as one of the top fantasy running backs. So what I'm saying is they've done studies and they've done articles on how, uh, on average, wide receivers play a game to a game and a half more than running backs do. Like, don't you want your first and second round picks to play more games for your fantasy team than not play those games? And Jamal, people, Jamal. I mean, just look at the NFL in general. They, they hit their highest mark ever in terms of passing. Uh, I, I think it was the NFL teams pass on 61 point, like 5% of their offensive plays now. In 2015, that was a number, and that's the highest it's ever been, and obviously it's going to keep trending upwards just because, you know, the, the quarterbacks and the receivers are so skilled and these pass interference penalties are, you know, why not chuck it down? There's a good chance we're going to get a holding penalty or PI. Either way, they're throwing it more than ever. There's more running back by committees than ever before. There's not any, you don't get 300 carry running backs anymore. Very, 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 very rarely. S having said all that, I'm not like I'm shying away. I'm not saying you can't go RB in the first round, but you got to look at it in terms of tiers. You know, like I'll take like six of the top wide receivers before I take one of those running backs because I think it's safer. But uh, my top tier of running backs would be Zeke, Adrian Peterson, Lamar Miller, David Johnson, and Todd Gurley in no particular order. Gurley and Peterson would fall on that list if it was not standard. Scoring like those are five guys. I'm okay with having as a workhorse as your as your first round pick Or like early second round pick, but if you look at all the guys going after that, it's like Jamal Charles Devonta Freeman uh, Eddie Lacy Whoever it is. It's like all oh, this there's there's question marks there like I, okay, so I'm in a 10 team league I'm the eighth pick so I'm gonna have the 8 and 12 and I'm hoping I can get two top receivers there, you know, whether it be A.J. Green and Brandon Marshall or something like that. 
Now, when the third pick comes around, I'm pick like 28 is my third round pick. When I get there, I've done a lot of mocks, and what I see is like I could have either like Amari Cooper or Mike Evans or like or like an Eddie Lacy, CJ Anderson, you know, one of those guys. And to me, like I'm taking, there's no doubt in my mind that Amari Cooper and Mike Evans will not be the top receiver on their team. No matter, there's nothing, nothing throughout this year will ever change that, except for an injury, which you can't predict anyways. But when you look at a guy like Eddie Lacy, like yeah, he, I mean, he still looks fat as shit. I don't know what all this bullshit is about. He lost all his weight. He still looks fat. Have you seen him on the TV? Doesn't matter. There, there's an easy, you could easily see James Starks getting like 40% of the carries if, if Eddie Lacy starts, you know, fucking eating, being fat and eating pasta and shit again. So I'm saying is like, th there will never be a time where like those top receivers won't be the top receivers on their team, but there's a ton of question marks facing running backs. And more so to the point is just the value of, of running backs in the later rounds of the drafts, you know, when you hit like rounds five, six, seven, eight, there's... A ton of good backs still on the board that could easily be the workhorse for the team. I mean, you could wait till round, you could literally go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, wide receiver, and then round six, start picking your running backs. You could still get a Jeremy Langford, you could still get an Arian Foster, you could still get Rashad Jennings, Frank Gore, you could still get, you know, Ryan Matthews. I don't remember if I even, I think I said him, pick him twice, fuck it, man. You can get D'Angelo Williams even later, have him as an RB1 for three weeks, and then hopefully you get someone off the wire. Like Garrett Blunt's going like 20 fucking rounds later. There's so much value there. There's so many good backs that will play. You know, Latavius Murray is going like at pick 50 right now. He's going to, he had 300 touches last year. You know, it, there's just so many good backs in the later half of the draft that you might as well stack up your wide receiver position so that you have the best wide receivers in your league. And that will give you a weekly advantage. And you're still going to have a good chance at hitting on one of those running backs. Because as of right now, you look at their outlooks and they will be the workhorse for the team. So stack up like three of those guys. And there's a good chance that one to two of them hit. And then you have an absolutely stacked team after that. So that kind of covers, I guess, running back and wide receivers. I guess I'll throw out a couple names. I like. I mean, I just mentioned a bunch. But like really late right now, Frank Gore is going super late. Uh, LeGarrette Blunt. I'm hoping Tyler Gaffney gets cut, not because I don't like the dude, he's a great guy. I mean, I'd love to go out to dinner with him, you know, have some wine, talk talk about Billy, Billy Bel Belichick's, but if he gets cut, you know, LeGarrette Blunt is the easy number one big back there. He's going well, after pick 100. You got Blunt, you got, uh, look, James White is so undervalued in PPR over the last I think it was over the last like, 10 weeks of the season last year, he was a top five PPR back after after Deion Lewis went down. Top five, literally top five. So guys with like David Johnson, Lamar Miller were up there where James White was. So there's no reason that he can't play as big of a role that as Deion Lewis. He, he could put up 80% of the production Lewis put up. And that other 20% is because Lewis is way more talented than James White. Um, so it's guys like that. Like you have... If you're in any sort of PPR league, like Duke Johnson, Gio Bernard, Gio Bernard even for standard, I love him this year. He uh, he was down a little bit last year. He scored like three touchdowns. But if you look at the years prior to that, that's the outlier because he had eight touchdowns the year before and seven the year before that. So you have guys like if you're in any sort of PPR, you could wait till like rounds nine and still get a Danny Woodhead who's been like a top 10 PPR running back for the last two years consecutively. Super underrated. Danny Woodhead, Melvin Gordon, his teammate, also like a seventh, eighth round pick, who's looked fantastic this preseason. Um, you know, like I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing that all these guys hit. I'm just giving you realistic logic behind the picks. And if you pick enough of these guys, which is, you stack your your first four or five picks with wide receivers, and then you don't have to worry about anything that position afterwards. Then you could take. I, like my my draft this year, I might my first ten to eleven rounds might just be strictly running backs, wide receivers. I might go five wide receiver, four wide receivers off the bat because that's how many I could start, and then possibly load up on five to six running backs. And, and a good chance if you if you pick good names, stick to the guys that are projected to be the workhorse that are projected to get a lot of touches in their offense. And like out of six of those guys, there's a good, good, good chance that one or two of them hits. I just rambled for so long. I'm literally out of breath and tired. I hope that like some of that shit just made sense to you guys. Because I'm getting emails of people like asking me like, 
you know, should I go this, 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 this? I'm like, bro, you, you, you just, you, you, you gotta stop. Simmer down. You gotta pick off value, but you have to stay within tiers. You know, you're not, I'm not gonna pick, say, okay, so say my third round pick comes around, and for some crazy ass reason, I'm picking between like T.Y. Hilton and maybe, uh, T.Y. Hillen and, like, for some crazy-ass reason, Lamar Miller is still on the board. Just for an example. Like, Lamar Miller, in terms of tiers, is so far ahead of T.Y. Hilton that you have to go for value there. That's a very basic example, but I'm just saying, you can't... I don't want you going into the draft thinking that it has to be wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, boom. But just the way I've done these drafts and the mocks that I've done and the practice I've done... It's looking that it's looking like that that strategy could work very well. Um, who are some late round wide receivers that I love this year? Michael Floyd for the Cardinals going around pick sixty. I know it's not late round, but I'm saying if 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 you decide to go with a couple running backs in the beginning, Michael Floyd pick sixty. You got John Brown with these concussions. You got uh, Fitzgerald with the MCL thing going on. You know who knows what's going to go on. He could very well wind up being their complete number one wide receiver and post like top 12 numbers. He's really big. He's really fast. He actually looks like a prototypical number one wide receiver. Um, he's just not like, his body fat's not at like 8%. So you're not like, oh, he looks like Calvin Johnson. Or he looks like AJ Green. But the dude is sized very well. He's fast, good hands, runs deep routes, runs short intermediate. Palmer loves him. He finished the year off on an absolute tear. I think 100 yards or more in like five of the last seven games. Great value at where he's going right now. Then you have Deshaun Jackson, uh, whenever he's healthy, if he plays a full season, he's finishing within the top 20 wide receivers. Now he has Kirk Cousins, who, who you know, should be an upgrade to the quarterback position where he is. Uh, Deshaun Jackson is going super late in drafts. Then you have guys like, you know, even Michael Crabtree, who's playing second fiddle to Amari Cooper, and he's getting almost just as, hey, he got more targets, but I don't expect that to continue. But either way, he's going to get, he's the number two option easily in that passing game. So he's going to see over 100 targets again this year. And that's someone you can get as a value play if you want. If, if you pick two stud wide receivers and then you want to have a guy as wide receiver three who's just going to show, you know, consistency and put up those good floor numbers, eight to ten points a game, Crabtree could be that guy for you. Same same for Hearns. I know a lot of people are down on Alan Hearns, but he's pretty safe as well because he's one of the first targets that Bortles looks at. When he doesn't look at Robinson, he looks right at Hearns. And you guys already know how I feel about Marvin Jones. I'll be taking Marvin Jones in every single draft that I have this year. He will finish as a top 20 receiver, probably higher. A couple other names to throw out there. Sterling Shepard, I uh, think that's going to be super high volume in terms of passing, and he's their easy number two option there. So the tar he should see a ton, a ton of targets. He's a good fantasy play just by default. Um, we have... Who's going... Who else is going freaking? Stefan Diggs. I mean, I know Teddy Bridgewater went, got hurt, but Diggs is the clear number one there. Um, and he's going super, super late. So Diggs is definitely a guy I could, I could fuck around with as my wide receiver four or five. Uh, and then you have both of the guys on the Saints, Willie Sneed and Michael Thomas. I like Thomas more than I like Sneed, but both on a talent level and on a value level where you can draft him. So Thomas, I love. Devin Funches is definitely a guy you want to get some shares of. Um, would not surprise me for a second if Devin Funches ended up scoring more fantasy points this year than Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, they're like identically built, uh, but Funches seems to be in better shape right now. I mean, Be Benjamin might be the number one target right now, uh, but when the season starts, I mean, I, I could see Funches getting just as many red zone looks. They're, they're both big, strong, fast guys, so I love Funches where he's going right now. I don't have too many more names. If you're in deeper leagues, I would definitely... Uh, mess around with some of the other rookie wide receivers like a Tyler Boyd who's the clear number two option in the Bengals offense uh, Will Fuller has looked super good for the Texans um, You know, I think in terms of the other guys like Josh Doxson and uh, Laquan Treadwell You're gonna want to wait on a little bit I mean you could stash him if you're in a deep league obviously and see what happens But in, neither of them have really progressed this summer. So I want to see something obviously before <clears throat> I jump in on those guys. Let's move to the tight end position. And the tight end position, <clears throat> I already did my top three league winning tight ends this year. They were Dwayne Allen, Martellus Bennett, 
And uh, who the freak was number three? Why am I blanking? Antonio Gates. That was number three. Uh, if I could redo that right now, I would probably go with Virgil Green of the Broncos instead of Dwayne Allen. I still like Dwayne Allen, no doubt, but I, uh, I'm i not sold on that Colts offense being good, to be honest with you. Kind of scares me. They have a ton of weapons, but that O-line is just awful. Um, th regardless, there's th the same spiel that I gave for quarterbacks, late round quarterbacks and the value in terms of the point differential. That will also rewind that, play that shit again, but insert tight end for every time I say quarterback. Same shit. So much good value at the end of the tight end position that you could wait till the 12th, 13th, 14th round. Quick names right here. Martellus Bennett, Antonio Gates, Dwayne Allen. You got Virgil Green. You got Jared Cook. Looks like he's going to be the tight end to own in Green Bay. Vance McDonald of the 49ers. Looks like he's going to be a big option, especially with Bruce Ellington out now. Didn't even think of that until right now. Um, Zach Miller of the Bears could easily be the number two passing option there behind Jeffrey. I mean, damn. Fuck, I almost... There's like too many good tight ends. Yeah, I won't be taking a tight end until way late in the draft. Like I said before, I'm going to probably go with a ton of running backs and a ton of wide receivers. Stack up receivers in the beginning because you know they're safe. You know you'll have three or four of the top receivers. And then... Blast away on like six running backs because a couple of them will hit. Tight ends, QBs, let them slide. Let your friends pick them early and you capitalize on the running backs and the wide receivers that are left for you to draft. Understood? Shit, my battery's about to run out again. Let me get this last little segment in. So defense and kickers. Defense, absolutely wait until the last second to last round unless you want to jump the one defense that I absolutely love this year is the Arizona Cardinals I actually love the Seahawks and the Broncos too those top three are all interchangeable but if if you want to jump a, like two rounds up and and grab one of those guys in like your third or fourth to last round I'm not going to be mad at it um as for kicker abs I don't care about Kiskowski I'm ne I will never go anything but the last round for my kicker um Quick hits. Uh, what else do I got for you? You know, good luck to all you drafters. Thank you so much for the support this summer. I fucking love doing this for y'all. I wish I had more time to post more videos and whatnot. Uh, but as always, please give me that thumbs up if you like the video. If you have more questions, I, I try to get back to all you guys. I get a lot of shit flooding in. Um, but subscribe, share, follow us on the Twitter, as always, at BDGE underscore Fantasy FB. I love y'all. Good luck on your drafts. And like I said, that draft video will be up either Tuesday or Wednesday next mother friggin week. Her, her.